Okay, so let's uh, read the look at the problem together. Uh, we're not going to read the problem statement since uh, you guys already read it. Okay, I'm just look at. Okay, so what this problem is about? This American Car Association is trying to develop an automated system for identifying an optimal travel plan for its members. Okay, and it mentioned that uh, um, often they have different objectives in planning. Uh, some people are interested in identifying routes that minimize the total travel time. Okay, um, and uh, some others uh, want to identify the most scenic route for to their desired destinations. And if we look at this uh, um, network map given, we can see that uh, um, on each arc, they're connecting a pair of nodes. Um, two numbers are given. The first number given <coughs> is in hours, and that represents the travel time uh, between the two nodes. Okay, and then the second number on the bottom, um, it's a point. So this is a scenic point that represents uh, uh, the the total, um, like the scenic uh, rating um, on this route. So for this problem. There are possibly two objectives. One is uh, finding the quickest route. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the class, um, the algorithm that uh, um, those Google Map uh, MapQuest use is uh, using the shortest path problem um, uh, algorithm. It uh, help people to identify the quickest route to go um, from point A to point B uh, based on. Uh, based on the, the the distance and the speed, so they will calculate a travel time between each pair of um, 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 cities or destinations. Okay, um, that's what we have um, on this uh, map. Um, or to the second objective will be to identify the most scenic route, which will be translated into maximize the scenic rating points. Um, and in chapter seven, we're going to talk about how to incorporate uh, multiple objectives uh, into uh, one problem, and trying to find a balance or <coughs> like a, a, a <coughs> balanced uh, solution uh, for the entire problem. Uh, but in this case, in in this chapter, we're going to just uh, set, uh, just uh, regard. Solve this problem with uh, two separate objectives. One being um, the minimize the travel time. So we'll use this as the objective, solve the problem, um, and then we're going to change the op the objective to maximize the scenic rating points and uh, solve the problem again. So we have two separate uh, um, problems with two separate solutions. Okay. So going back to our network. Um, let's just look at uh, finding the quickest route first. Okay, so this is uh, a network problem, and just now we talk about the transshipment problem. And in those transshipment problems, uh, we have uh, given uh, supplies and given demand. Okay, but in this problem, <coughs> just by looking at it, if we want to relate to the transshipment problem. What we can tell is that, for example, this this point, this node, it has two outflows. So this looks like a supply node, and the destination. So here, this node one represents the starting point, and node eleven represents the destination. It only has inflows into it, so um, it represents a demand node, and all the other nodes that's uh, in the middle, these represent the transshipment nodes. Okay. So we have the arc, so we have the nodes, but where are the supply and demand? Okay. To think about this, let's see. Okay, can we just assume that? Okay, we have one car of pa one car full of passengers here. Okay, we we'll start from here, and uh, what we're going to do is to transport this uh, entire car of passengers uh, through this network. And all the way to the destination node, which is uh, node 11. Okay, still, it's a transshipment node problem. Okay, transshipment problem, and uh, we assume that uh, we have a supply of one. 
So one car or one person. Okay, and we have a, a demand being one at the destination. We're going to transport this one car or one person to this destination node, and all the other nodes, all the transshipment nodes, they have a demand being zero, which means that this one car is not going to stop anywhere. It just it will go through those places, but it will not stop there. It will stop at this destination place. Okay, with this, we trans transformed this uh, shortest pass problem into a special case of the transshipment node, the trans transshipment problem with the one supply at the starting point and the one demand at the destination and the zero demand in all the transshipment nodes. Okay, so I think this is the most difficult part. And once this part is clear, then it's pretty easy to do the model. Okay, so we'll just use the first uh, <coughs> objective. Okay, and our decision variables still it should be the x i j. Okay, and the x i j. Now we are we are no longer considering. Okay, say so how many cars or how many people to ship from node 1 to node 2. But uh, we are concerned with uh, whether we should take this route or not. Okay, But since we have only one supply and one demand, then those values in between will just be 0 or 1. Okay, Then if it's uh, 0, means okay, we ship one car from node 1 to 2. Um, that can be translated into we are going to take route 1 to 2. Okay, and if uh, this value, so say x13 get a value of 0, that means, okay, we are not going to take it. We're not going to take this route. Okay, so we'll write our objective function, uh, sorry, the decision variables as xij, and it's uh, whether to take root i to j and the 1 means yes 0 means no okay and uh, why i said that uh, uh, the values that we get uh, on x uh, ij values will only be 0 or 1 is because that uh, um, we have one demand and one supply okay and uh, when we write constraints that conform to the balance of low rule, and uh, plus we only have some constraint that set the simple lower bound or simple upper bound for our decision variables, it's guaranteed that our solution um, on the x i g values will be integers. Okay, and because the demand supply is one, um, so the solution will only be a value between zero and one. And since they have to be integers, so they will have they will be only be zero or one. Okay, so that's what exactly what we need. So whether to take this route or not. Okay, so you see the advantage of having um, constraints that follow the balance of low rule now. Okay, so now we'll continue. We'll finish the objective function. So there could be two objectives. Uh, first objective would be to minimize the total travel time. Okay, a lot to write. So, um, okay, from one to two, that's uh, two point five hours. Plus three hours. That's x one three. Okay, then two to five, two point five. X two four. Plus one point seven x. 2, 3, plus 2.8 x 3, 6, plus one point seven x 3, 5. 
plus five six. something missing here. Let me see. Okay, so that's a 1.5 hours. Plus 1.5 x78 plus 2.3 x 7 10 okay so notice that uh, when I put a subscript uh, that include two digits um, I'll just put a comma between uh, the two subscript okay then 2.3 now 1.1 x 8 comma 10 and 2 X eight nine plus two point seven. Oops. Two point uh, hmm, where were I? Eight nine two point seven ten eleven. Ten, eleven. Okay, then the last one, three point three. Okay, so if this is the objective function that we wrote, um, if we want to minimize the total travel time, okay, and if we want to maximize the total scenic rating, then you just change the object function to be maximize, and um, all those coefficients you need to change to those scenic points here. Okay, so change all of those to the scenic point. Uh, we're not going to write it here. Then, for the constraint, we know that we're assuming uh, one supply here and uh, one demand there. Okay, then, uh, and a zero demand in all the transshipment nodes. Uh, then remember that uh, uh, we have the balance flow rule. First, we need to determine the supply demand relationship. And uh, in this case, we have uh, the total supply equals to the total demand, um, which means uh, for all the constraints, we can write in the format, which is uh, inflows. Um, inflows minus the outflows equals to be supply or demand. Okay, so that's uh, the format of all of our constraint. So we'll start to write, okay, for node 1, no inflows and outflow is uh, minus 1, 2, 3, 3 equals to B and make sure you use the negative value to represent the supply okay and then node 2 inflow x 1 2 minus outflows 2 3 and 2 4 okay need to be equal to B the zero demand there Okay, so inflow and outflow. And uh, 
I'm not going to write for all the constraints. Actually, I'm going to ask you guys to finish all the constraints and uh, submit it to the following forum. Okay, so click on the link right be be below this video and submit your um, all your constraints there. Okay, um, I just write for the last node, WinJS node 11. Um, that's inflow. 9, 11, minus, oh sorry, plus x10, 11, equals to be 1. Okay, so please finish the constraint for node 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and uh, put it in the following forum.